It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Hey, today I want to talk about Blackford Capital selling off some assets to our friends over at Arlington. Karcher's World, USA. Boy, I think about Karcher's World, the next thing that comes to my mind is Radio Shack. And when I read this article, I'm thinking to myself, is Arlington attempting to buy Karcher's World so they could put all these other tech products inside those stores and create another Radio Shack? Because that didn't kind of work out. What in the world would Arlington be doing buying Cartridge World is the question I'm asking. I tried to read more about this, but you know, it doesn't matter what blog you go to. It doesn't matter what analyst you, you look up and you try to get information on this Blackford Capital sale of Cartridge World to Arlington. Because all they do is copy and paste the press release. It's the same story in every single blog. Our industry, you know, we all know we have to, it has to consolidate. Maybe the media... The blog holders and the analysts ought to start consolidating because you all just write the same exact stuff, a copied and pasted press release. Let's jump on the Sharp Interactive board. I went ahead and pulled up this, this press release, I guess, if you will, from the Imaging Channel blog. But, but folks, let me just read a little bit of this and we'll kind of jump into today's episode. Wholesale Group announced today the acquisition of Buffalo Grove, Illinois-based international toner company. Reno, Nevada-based supplies wholesaler McHenry and Illinois-based Cartridge World USA from Blackford Capital. Wholesale Group, buying up some assets, right? Supplies Wholesaler, Cartridge World USA, and International Toner Corporation's operations will now benefit from the experience and stability of CWG, International's brand diversity, and industry experience. Each company playing different roles, yet significant roles, in the growth of the U.S. imaging supplies channel marketplace over the years. In the growth of the imaging channel marketplace over the years. Now, surely you don't believe that the imaging channel is growing. Folks, here's the reality. You might be able to steal customers from somebody and grow, but that's displacement growth. The problem with displacement growth in a declining industry is everything you just stole or got from another customer or from a competitor is declining in value. In other words, you can get all the displacement growth you can. But as soon as you renew the displacement growth you got, it's going to be for less money and less profit. The industry is declining. The end users are printing less and less every single day. There's no growth in the imaging channel. We should quit saying that because I think it fools people. We should talk about growth in the imaging channel for what it is. It's displacement growth. It's because somebody went out of business, so we're going to grow. That's not really good for an industry. How'd you grow so much? Well, a whole sector went out of business and we picked up their customers. You see, when you say it like that, it doesn't sound really good, does it? It's not something to get real excited about, is it? Someone reached out to me and they actually said this. Hey, I see where Blackford Capital sold cartridge roll. People are still investing in print, Ray. You're crazy. You keep telling everybody it's declining and people are out there investing in it. I'm thinking, well, it's not, it's not really an investment if you have to pay like two cents on the dollar. That's called a really good deal buy the top off it, wipe out a whole bunch of costs and get your ROI as quick as you can. Hopefully that's what my friends over at Arlington are thinking about with all of this. Hopefully they're not thinking of turning these Cartridge World stores into Radio Shack stores. I'm, I'm just saying. Folks, here's the reality. Cartridge World started in 1998. In 1998, Harrison Ford was the sexiest man alive. Today, Harrison Ford's, well, he's an old man. And the bottom line is Harrison Ford went through a lot of changes. If you walk into a cartridge world in 1998 and you walk in one today, it hasn't changed that much. I'll tell you something that has changed. When cartridge world started back in 1998, it was a place for end users to bring their cartridges so the folks in the store could refill them. They could refill toner cartridges if they were refilling ink cartridges right there in the back room. The end users felt like they were helping out the environment. They were saving some money. And that's how that industry was born. That particular model has long gone. Today, when you walk into a Cartridge World store, for the most part, you're buying Chinese clone toners. <laughs> I mean, cartridges and ink. I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm not saying that to beat up anything. I'm just saying that to be a reality. Most of the cartridges that are sold through Cartridge World are Chinese clone cartridges. They're not even remanufactured. It would be nice if they would share the details of that. Be nice for the public to probably know that. But at the end of the day, nobody wants to go to a store to buy a cartridge. 
A cartridge has become such a commodity, right? The businesses out there that are on managed print services, contracts, they're getting their toner from the supplier. The people in the small office and in the home office, you know, maybe if they could go to the Cartridge World website, which by the way, I went ahead and did that. Here's a Cartridge World kind of near me, but I can't buy anything from them. They want me to call them up. What are they going to tell me the location to drive to to go pick up my cartridge or my ink cartridge? Folks, as soon as someone goes to your website because they want to buy a car, I mean, it's cartridge world. You would think, think about this. You would think during the global pandemic, when people were locked in their houses for two years, the people with the word cartridge in their name would have built a massive e-commerce platform, seamless to end users. I remember talking to some of the leaders at Cartridge World back in 20 early 2019 about this very thing before COVID even started. And you would think it was like blasphemy. Oh, we can't have e-commerce. Oh, our store franchisee owners. Oh, they would hate that. Blah, blah, blah. See, they never figured out how to use the damn technology. I mean, folks, you, you could go on a website, click in your damn address to have the thing shipped to you. And behind the scenes, there's technology that could have sent that revenue and those profits right to the right franchisee. It's called technology. It's called changing the game. Nah, our franchisee owners want the end users to call them up so they could give them directions to the store. So they could come out and pick something up. Totally insane because during the global pandemic, Cartridge World probably could have really done something different to change the game had they actually got into e-commerce. It's kind of too late right now. And like I said, I'm hoping Arlington's not trying to turn these things into radio shacks. Because folks, just go to Amazon and click buy now. But I, want, I put this last slide up here, folks. I want to talk a little bit about private equity. You know, private equity wants about a 20% return on their total portfolio. That's kind of what they want. And a lot of times, some of the assets in those portfolios, well, they just go to hell. And private equity meets and they decide, you know what? This, this stuff we bought around Prince gone to hell. Let's just get rid of it. And they get rid of it. Long time ago, there was a lot of aspirations for these thousands of print customers to be able to do other things in those accounts and allowing private equity to make more money off that investment. But I believe today, most of those aspirations have been shot. Most of the private equity realizes that a lot of these folks that they invested in aren't going to be able to do what they thought they were able to do. And so I wrote this. Private equity must cut losses and mergers are a must. However, real capital wins have probably faded. I don't think there's going to be any home runs coming out of private equity without some real drastic changes. Decisions will be the toughest in the industry's history. Folks, we're, our industry is going to have to make some really tough decisions at OEM level, at dealer level, private equity level, bankers level. Really tough decisions are coming and we need to be prepared for those tough decisions. Because now there is zero ability to grow business print at end user level. It is never going to happen again. You can't sell a printer to ABC company and next year the printer print more. All the growth you get is going to be displacement growth. Displacement growth is not a growing industry. It's growth because the industry is consolidating, is shrinking, is crashing. Growth because other people went out of business is not a good sign for an industry unless that industry decides to diversify and change the game. And unfortunately, a lot of folks in the Document Imaging Channel are still in the fantasy land. Also, the lack of meaningful diversification should be eroding any past aspirations of investors. I truly believe this is happening. Investors are starting to realize they just can't diversify. We're just not changing the game enough. We're still too reliant on print and print output. What's going to be different? Folks, a lot of things have to change. There's no doubt about it. But one thing we all know for sure, status quo is the killer. Ball, it'll be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all on Monday.